So when you get your unit, all of your feeders will be mounted inside the cage system to protect them from shipping damage. So you'll want to remove your door, take out your feeders, hang them on, and then put your door on. One thing I want to point out is when installing your feeder doors uh, with your feeder will already be on your unit. You cannot start with your door and hook the top because it will not fit. The way you do this is you start with your feeder door inside the trough, swing it forward and then hook it. And what this allows is for, makes it a little easier to install. And then you can adjust your feeders into your different feed gates. All of your plastic parts will come with a protective film on it to keep it from being scratched and shipping. So you can remove that just by peeling it off when you get it. The plastic doors open using this tab. The way you do it is you lift up and you pull open. And as you close, you can let it down at any point, but as you close, you lift up to grab that latch. Next, we're going to go over the controls of the unit. Each level has two switches and a temperature control. The bottom switch will work the light inside each unit or each level. This controller or this switch is used to turn off and on the temperature controller so you can keep your lights on and off without your heat or you can turn your heat on and turn your lights off. They all work independently. The way the temperature control works is it's set for Fahrenheit and as you can see there's a little dot right here next to the 90. What that's showing you is that the temperature is low enough from my set point that the heater is actually turned on. So you can watch that and if the dot is there, the heat is on, or it's calling for heat rather than no heat, and the way you set it is you push the set point, you push it again, and there's your set point. It's currently set for 92 degrees. You can adjust that up or down using the arrow keys, and it will actually go by tenths. So you can go up to 95, I think the maximum, if you hold it down, it'll rapid adjust and it starts over at the bottom. So I'm going to set this for 80 and the way you restart it is to push both buttons. It's currently 90 degrees inside that heating area and since my set point is at 80 you can see the red button or the red dot has disappeared. So I'm going to set it again. I'm going to raise it above my 90 degrees that it currently is. Set it for 95. I'm going to hit my set point. I'm going to hit my bottom two buttons to get me back into normal operation. And as you can see, the red dot has come on, indicating that it is currently calling for heat. And this will start rising to 95 degrees. The next thing we're going to go over is how to disassemble your unit for washing. You're going to have to remove all of your heating elements and the power channel.
The next thing we'll remove is the heating element and it's held in place on these brackets right here. This is your heating element box. In order to remove the heating element box, we'll have to remove this wire mesh divider that divides the cages in half. Next, we're going to go over how to remove this wire divider that separates the cages in half. Um, it's got pegs at the bottom that actually stick down into the wire mesh floor. What you're going to have to do is come at, from the end where the water troughs are and come at the end, stick your arms in, push down on the floor to get that peg to release from the mesh and slide it to the side. And then it falls out of its catch at the top and it can be removed out the end of the unit. So here again is the peg sticking down into the mesh floor. This is the wire divider that separates the cages. What you're going to have to do is push down on the floor to get that peg to release from the floor. And then when you get it to release, you push it to the side and it'll drop out of its slots at the top of the cage and you can slide it right out the end. So the next thing we'll do is remove the heating element. And what you're going to do is reach in here with this center divider removed and you're going to slide it out of this channel until it's free from the rack and then remove the heating element for washing. To remove the flooring, the easiest thing to do is to slide the litter pan forward, come in from the cage below it, and push the floor up slightly so you can slide the flooring out the end of the unit. The final piece you'll remove uh, to clean is the center metal divider. It actually just slides out from under the floors next to it. Once you have one set of floors out, you can remove it and just lay it over on its side and remove it out the, the access windows. I'm going to show the adjustment of the feeder. Uh, the feed door actually has three adjustments for the feed gate. Uh, you have this first notch, which is a total restriction, which will not allow the birds to get any of the feed. Then you can adjust it by lifting slightly and pushing out to the next level, which will give them a slight amount of feed access. And then as the birds get larger, you can adjust them out to the larger opening. And then again, just need it all the way out to the end to use for full feed access. So your unit comes with two different styles of doors. You have one that is a little shorter than the other. This is for your feeder. And you have one that's longer and it has this divider on it and that is for your water troughs. So your doors with your feeders, uh, these are, this will go on your feeder side of the unit. So you mount your feeder and then your doors go on that side of the unit. So your water door has this divider on it and what it's meant to do is that when you have baby chicks on this side, they can't jump into the water trough and get over into this. So this is a restriction to keep that from happening when you adjust the door. So as you can see, that seals that off and keeps the birds from jumping from cage to cage.